Welcome to an example on how to set up and solve a differential equation that models the current in an RLC circuit. Suppose we have an RLC circuit with a resistor of 100 mini ohms, or 0 0.1 ohms, inductor with inductance of 50 millihenries, or 0 0.05 henries, and a capacitor of 5 farads with constant voltage. A, set up the ODE equation for the current I, B, find the general solution, C, solve for I of zero equals 10, and I prime of zero equals zero. For an RLC circuit, if R is the resistance, L is the inductance, C is the capacitance, E of T is the voltage, Q of T is the charge, I of T is the current, where Q prime equals I, then L times I prime plus R times I plus Q divided by C equals E. If we differentiate both sides of the spec to T, we have the differential equation in bold below, which is L times I double prime plus R times I prime plus one divided by C times I equals E prime of T. This is the equation we use to model the current in the RLC circuit. And now let's list the given information. We know R is equal to 0 0.1 ohms. We know L is equal to 0 0.05 henrys. C equals five farads. And because we have constant voltage, E of T is equal to C some constant, indicating E prime of T is equal to zero. And now performing substitution into the differential equation, we have 0 0.05 I double prime plus 0 0.1 I prime plus one fifth I equals zero. Let's go and divide through by 0 0.05. Simplifying, we have part A, the ODE equation is I double prime plus two I prime plus four I equals zero. Notice we have a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, and therefore we can determine the general solution using a characteristic equation. The corresponding characteristic equation is r squared plus two r plus four equals zero, which we need to solve using the quadratic formula or completing the square. I'm gonna go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Simplifying, we have two roots. We have negative one plus or minus square root three i. Notice we have two complex roots, which indicates the form of the general solution. If we assume the complex roots from the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, notice alpha is negative one and beta is square root three. And therefore the general solution is i of t equals c sub one e to the alpha t cosine beta t plus c sub two e to the alpha t sine beta t, which can also be expressed as c sub three e to the alpha t cosine of the quantity beta t minus gamma. Performing substitution for alpha and beta, we have the general solution. Again, expressed as a sum or combined as c sub three cosine of the quantity square root three t minus gamma. This is the answer to part B, the general solution. And now we need to find the particular solution given the initial conditions in part C. When finding a particular solution, it's often easier to use the general solution as a sum of cosine and sine, which we will do. Using I of zero equals 10, we substitute zero for T and set the expression equal to 10. Notice when T is equal to zero, E to the zero is one, cosine zero is one, and sine zero is zero. This gives us C sub one E to the zero cosine zero, and then because sine zero is zero, this term drops out, giving us equals 10. Solving, we have C sub one equals 10. Now we know I of T is equal to 10 E to the negative T cosine square root three t plus c sub two e to the negative t sine square root three t. And now from here, before we use i prime of zero equals zero to determine c sub two, we need to find i prime of t, which requires quite a bit of work. We need to apply the product and chain rule to find the derivative of the first term, and then the product and chain rule again to find the derivative of the second term. I've already worked all this out. Here is i prime of t, you may want to pause the video and verify this is the correct derivative. And now because we know i prime of zero is equal to zero, we substitute zero for t and set it equal to zero. When substituting zero for t, e to the zero is one, cosine zero is one, and sine zero is zero. So this will simplify nicely to just negative 10 plus c sub two square root three equals zero, and therefore c sub two is equal to 10 divided by square root three. And again, you may want to pause the video to verify when substituting zero for t, we do get this equation. So now that we know that c sub one is 10 and c sub two is equal to 10 divided by square root of three, we know the particular solution, or we know the equation for i of t. 
i of t is equal to 10 e to the negative t cosine square root 3t plus 10 divided by square root 3 e to the negative t sine square root 3t. I hope you found this helpful.